Welcome to the session on deflection of beams by momentarium method. In this session, we are going to discuss about how to solve the problems on simply supported beam. In the previous session, you have studied, learnt how to solve the problems on cantilever beams subjected to various types of loading system. Now, this is in this method uh, there is a quite change in the procedure of solving the problem compared to the earlier method that is in cantilever beams. Now let us try to understand the method of solving the problems of a simply supported beam <coughs> by studying the various loading system on a simply supported beam. Now in this case consider a simply supported beam subjected to a point load W at a distance A, eccentric distance A from support A. Now in here we are going to study about how to calculate the slope and deflection. The slopes will be calculated at the supports or anywhere if you want and the deflection under the loading system. Now here we are considered a beam of uniform flexural rigidity EI. The slope at A, to calculate the slope at A, draw first draw the projectors, then draw an elastic curve. Since this is a simply supported beam, the curve will be of sagging in nature. Draw a tangential line at support A. The angle made that is made with respect to this horizontal line AB is the slope at A that is called as theta A. The vertical deflection that what you find here from here to here that is from B to B dash is called delta BA that is the deflection at support B. This is designated by delta BA that is deflection at B with respect to A. There is a meaning of this delta P A. Then draw the M by E I diagram. You know for an eccentric loading system, the maximum bending moment under the load will be equal to W A B by L. There is a value. And this one divided by the flexural rigidity E I will get me the M by E I diagram. The CG of this one from the support B will lie at a distance L plus B by 3. This is a CG. It lies. From the support A, it will be L plus A by 3. According, now let me calculate the slope. Now consider the triangle B, A, B dash, where you got the angle at A equal to theta A, that is the slope. From the trigonometrical ratio function, we got that tan theta a is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. That is tan theta a is equal to opposite side by adjacent side is L. And since the angle of deformation, uh, rotation is too small, we are going to approximate the tan theta a equal to theta a. Therefore, the theta a will be equal to delta b a by L. The angle of rotation here it is in clockwise, it can be taken negative or we can designate here by writing clockwise rotation. Now what does the first theorem say? The first most theorem says that the moment of the area of M by EI diagram between A and B will be the slope, oh, sorry um, we are calculating right now the deflection delta BA. So this one says that the moment of the area of M by EI diagram between A and B about B. So moment of the area of the M by B diagram means first let us calculate the area of the M by EI diagram that is half into base into base is L, I it is here, WAB by L by EI. That's the area. The centroidal distance of this from support B will get me X bar distance and if you multiply that you are going to get the deflection at support B that is half into base into height 
into x bar. So that is W A B by 2 i into L plus B by 3. This is delta B. So divide this by L, you'll get the slope. Similarly, if you want to calculate the slope at B, the same procedure is adopted. That is, you're going to draw the elastic curve as usual, draw the tangential line at the support B. You'll find the deflection at A. From A to A, it shifts down. So you're going to call this deflection as delta AB. That is deflection at A with respect to B. Now the tan, consider the triangle A, B, B, A dash. This is the angle theta B. Tan theta B is equal to opposite side by adjacent side. That is delta AB by L. As I said earlier, the angle of deformation is too small. You can equate tan theta B equal to theta B. Delta AB, this time you are going to measure the central distance from the support A. So X bar A will be equal to L plus A by 3. And the area of the diagram is half into base into height. Multiply by its central distance. We will get this value. This is the delta AB. Divide this by L, we will get the slope of B. Now let us try to understand how to calculate the deflection under the load. As usual, you are going to draw the elastic curve from A to B. Either consider theta A or theta B. Anything you can consider. Now I am considering the theta A here. In this case, I am going to name these points as C, C1 and C2. The deformation or deflection under the load will be equal to delta C. This is what we want to calculate. And this we know how to calculate earlier. It is delta BA by L. So this one we want to calculate means we know how to calculate the value of CC2. You draw the A by A diagram. As usual, the delta C value will be equal to, this value is equal to CC1. That we can get from the formula C C2 minus C1 C2. C C2 minus C1 C2. Now how get how to get the value of C C2? It's very simple. You can consider the triangle is C C2. Consider the triangle A C C2. Tan theta A is equal to opposite side, that is C C2, divided by this distance. That is equal to small a. Therefore, cc2 is equal to tan a into a. This can be written as theta a into small a. Now, how to get the value of c1 and c2? This one. This is a displacement that has taken place from c1 to c2. Now, this is nothing but the moment of the area of m by a diagram between a and c. It's a moment of the area of the M by A diagram about C, about another point. So the distance from here to here is one third of this distance, that is A by 3. So here of this is half into, base is A, height is WAB by L by EI. So multiply this by A into A by 3. We will get the delta CA. Delta CA is nothing but C1, C2. And the product of this is WAQ B by 6 LEI, which is nothing but C1, C2. Already we have calculated C, C2. Substitute in this, get the value of deflection under the load. And this is the procedure that we want to follow. And as you observe, that it is different from whatever the problems we are solving by for the cantilever beams. Now if I am not interested with slope at A, I can also calculate with respect to the slope at B. The final answer will be the same, but the method of appro approach can be understood now. I am going to draw a tangential line at B, call this angle as theta B 
and we know that tan theta p is equal to delta b by a b by l. You want to mark these points under the load as c, c1, c2. The reflection is c c1 equal to delta c. The same formula. Now consider the triangle. This c b c2 this triangle tan theta b is equal to opposite side c c2 divided by b and c c2 is equal to tan theta b into b so let us calculate the deflection from c1 to c2 that is nothing but the area of the M by A diagram between C and B about C. The distance from here to here is X bar C equal to B by 3, one third of the distance. The distance is B here. Uh, the final product of this one is half into base is B, height is WAB by L multiply by its total distance b by 3 it is now w a b cube by 6 l e i substitute this value of c1 c2 and the c c2 in this equation get the deflection delta c so either of the method side could be considered for this solving this problem now consider another simply supported beam subjected to point load W, sorry P, so W also can take this, no problem, placed at the center of the span at a distance L by 2 from either support, having uniform flexural rigidity EI. Now as usual we go with the slopes at the supports, since it is symmetrically loaded, slope at A will be equal to slope at B. You calculate any one side, one end, same thing, you put it in the other with a change in the direction of rotation. So to get the, calculate the slope, draw the projectors, draw the elastic curve, draw a tangential line at A, the change in the direction will be called as the slope here, draw the bending moment diagram, so the maximum bending moment will equal to W L by 4 or P L by 4. Here it is P, therefore it is P L by 4 divided by E I. So we call this as M by E data. Now tan theta A, already I have told you, tan theta A is equal to opposite side, adjacent side. I am writing directly here, theta A equal to delta B A by L. So delta B A, as you know that it is the moment of the area of M by E I diagram between A and B about B. Now the, in this case the centroidal distance C G will lie exactly below the loading point at a distance equal to L by 2. So what does this delta B A will be equal to? It's equal to delta B A is equal to half into base, base is L height PL by 4 by EI into its central distance from the support B it is L by 2 so area into X bar will get me the moment of the area of M by EI diagram between A and B about B so this value if it is divided by the span L we are going to get the slope at A that is PLQ by 16 EI into 1 by N. That is, we are going to divide this delta BA by L. We are going to get the final product as PL squared by 16 EI, and which is in clockwise direction at support A. The same procedure of calculation can be done to get the slope at B. Instead of that, we are going to write it as PL squared by 16 EI anti clockwise rotation. There's a slope at A and B. PL square by 16 EI. Now let us calculate the deflection under the load. 
there are two ways of calculating the deflection under the load for a symmetrically loaded system when the section is uniform. It has got uniform flexural rigidity. You're going to draw the elastic curve as usual. You're going to have the bending moment m by year diagram. Now mark the points here at the below the loaded system as C, C1, C2. The deflection or displacement from C to C1 is called as delta C and that is what we want to calculate. And from the equation we can observe that this value C C1 is equal to C C2 minus C1 C2. Now consider the triangle A C C2, this triangle, this portion. Once again this tan theta A is equal to this opposite side by adjacent side. Now the adjacent side has become L by 2. In the previous course it was A, now it is L by 2. So now the CC2 value will be equal to tan theta A into L by 2, that is theta A into L by 2. Theta A we know already, it is delta BA by L, that is PL square is 16 EI. Substitute that in CC2, we are going to get the final value of CC2 equal to PL cube by 32 EI. Let us calculate the value of C1, C2. It is nothing but the moment of the area of e, M by E I diagram between A, C, about C. That is the formula to calculate the value of C1, C2. It is a moment of the area of the M by E I diagram between A and C, about C. C, it is one third of this half of the span. So area is half, base is L by 2, height is PL by 4 by EI. Multiply by X bar from C, it is one third of L by 2. So it, finally the product of this becomes PL cube by 96 EI. Now we know the value of CC2 as well as CC1. CC2 was equal to PL cube by 36 EI, so 32 EI substitute in the equation here. In this equation, we will get the final product as PL cube by 48 EI. This is what to be remembered. Deflection under the low placed centrally over the span, we are going to get that equal to PL cube by 48 EI. This is to be remembered many times to solve the problems in higher semesters. Okay. Now the same deflection can be calculated by another simple method as you observe here. Draw the elastic curve as usual. Draw the bending moment diagram. Now in this case consider since it is symmetrically loaded system of loading, the maximum bending moment at the center you consider only half of the portion of this M by E I diagram and the deflection at C that under the load will be equal to moment of the area of M by E I diagram between A and C about A. Remember this. In the previous session, per case, we are calculating from this for C1, C2. Now it is not C1, C2. Directly I am calculating delta C. There is another simple way of calculation, calculating the deflection under the load. Consider the portion of the M by E I diagram between A and C. Take moment about A, that is important. Moment about A is two third of L by 2. And that will be the deflection that is half into base L by 2 into height P L by 4 by E I into two third of this. The final product will be equal to PLU by 48 EI. Now this is very much simpler. You can make use of the symmetry of loading and symmetry of the beam. You can calculate directly by applying this. If there is any change in the geometrical section, 
of the beam you cannot apply this formula you have to go with the earlier method whatever we have I've taught you now let me go into the another problem that is a problem on a simply supported beam subjected to a uniformly distributed load of W per meter run over the span L having uniform flexural rigidity let us calculate the slopes at the supports A and B as well as the deflection under the load so at the center so now let us calculate the slopes at A and B since this is also a symmetrically loaded figure B we can calculate slope at A similarly you can write the slope at B so draw the elastic curve as usual draw the transition line at A now you are used to this formula draw the bending moment which is parabolic in nature having a maximum bending moment value of WL square by 8 by EI you will get me the M by EI diagram the CG of this lies at a distance L by 2 from either support either from support A or B it lies at a distance L by 2 now the slope at A tan theta A will be equal to opposite side by adjacent side tan theta A since it is too small we are equating this to theta A we are getting the final value of delta PA by L so what is delta BA? Once again, it is the area of M by A diagram between A and B about B. So area of this diagram, M by A diagram, parabolic diagram, it is equal to two-third of base is L into I. Two-third of base into I is the area. Its centroidal distance from the support B. We are taking moment about B. From here, B, it is L by 2. So you are going to multiply this by L by 2, you are going to get the deflection at B is equal to W L to the power of 4 by 24 EI. The slope, you are going to get it once again this product, this magnitude is divided by L, you are going to get the slope at A equal to W L cube by 24 EI. And this is clockwise rotation. Similarly, at B you can get the value also equal to W L Q by 24 EI, which is the anticlockwise in nature. This is how we are going to calculate the slopes at A and B. Now coming to the deflection under the central center of the span. This is the deflection that what we want. I am going to consider since this is symmetrically loaded. I am going with a very simple formula of considering the span between A and C. I am going to get the span between A and C. Consider only half of the portion of this diagram, M by A diagram. The CG of this parabolic type of diagram, we are going to get it equal to 5 by, at a distance, 5 by 8 times of L by 2. If it is from the center of this one, it would have been 3 by 8 times of L by 2. Now we are considering moment about the support A whenever it is symmetrical about the vertical axis. So what is the area of this part? Area of this is 2 third of L by 2 into WL square by 8 EI. That is the area. Multiply its central distance from A, support A, that is equal to 5 by 8 times of L by 2. The final value of this is equal to 5 W to the power of 4 by 384 EI. This is what to be remembered. Deflection at center for a uniformly distributed load over the span of a simply supported beam will be equal to 5 W to the power of 4 by 384 EI. Remember this. And EA we are going to substitute in terms of kilonewton meters, kilonewton dash meter square, and W in terms of kilonewton, L in terms of meters. Now take this one. In this case, it is a non prismatic member having varying sections. 
AC is of having a moment of inertia of I, CB is having a moment of inertia of 2I. Understand this problem, it's very important. If you try to understand this, it becomes very easy to solve the other problems on varying sections. Now we are going to calculate the slope at A, B as well as at C and the central deflection. It's a lengthy one, but still very simple. You can easily understand it. Now let me try to get the slopes that supports A and B. It is not symmetry. It will not be the same here since the cross section is varying. You go with the regular procedure of drawing the elastic curve, drawing the dimension line at A to get the slope at A. Deflection at B will be equal to delta BA and this is the value L equal to 4 meters. Now you are going to calculate the reactions at the support. Due to the symmetry of loading, the reactions will be equal on either side of the support. VA as well as VB will be equal to half of the load that is 20 kN on either side. Calculate first the M by EI values that is the M by EI calculations. Since the reaction at the support is 20, the distance is 0, 20 into 0 is 0, we are going to get 0 kiloton meter moment at B. And when you come to the moment at C, we've got two sections here at C. So calculate once to the right of the section and left of the section. Two times you have to calculate the moment at C. Whenever there is a variation, this also we observed it in the case of cantilever problem, the same way of calculating the M by A calculation. Now we'll calculate with respect to the right of C. To the right of C, I've got 2 EI. So what is the moment at C? It is force 20 into 2. 20 into 2. We have to divide this by EI because we are calculating EI calculations, M by EI calculations. We have to divide it by EI. What is the value of I we got here? It's 2I. Therefore, you divide this by 2 EI. The final product is 20 by EI. Now calculate just to the left of C, just to the left of C. Here the moment of inertia is 1i. So you divide this, force into distance is 20 into 2 is 20, into 2 is 40, divided by 1ei. It's equal to 40 by ei. Now moment at A is nothing but force into distance is 0 support it will be 0. Draw the M by EA diagram for these values. Moment at B is 0. Moment just to the right of C is 20 by EI. Just to the right of C is 20 by EI. Since there is an abrupt change here in the cross section, you are going to have a vertical drop here. Rise or drop whatever you want to call, you call it. It is 40 by EI just to the left of C, mark it here, then the support, at support A it is 0, 12. This is the M by EI diagram. Now, we want to have the slopes at A. As usual, consider the triangle B, A, B dash. Theta A will be equal to delta B A by L. Theta A is delta B A by L. How to get the value of delta B A? It's a moment of the area of M by EA diagram between A and B about B. We have two parts of triangles. Divide this into two triangles. This one and this one. Get the CGs of these two things from B. From here it will be two third of B. From here to here it will be one third of this distance plus two meters. You can observe that now. The CG of this triangle will be at a distance two third of this distance. That is 2 meters. And this is at from here to here it is one third of this span, this part, and plus this 2 meters from here. So it is 2 plus one third of 2. That is the central distance of the. Get the area of this two diagrams, half into base into height, half into base into height, half into base into height, into the central distance from here 2 plus 2 one third of 2 then the 
moment of the area of this triangle half into base into height half into base into height acting at two third from B. So get the final product of this one. It comes to, works out to be 133.47 by EI. Divide this by the span L. L is 4 meters here. According to this formula, you will get the slope theta A in terms of radius 33.36 by EI. This is the theta A value. Now slope at B, draw the tangential line at B, this is the angle of change, that is theta B, it is equal to delta AB by L, moment of the area of M by A diagram, about A we are going to calculate, you can observe it here, A 2 third of this one, 2 plus 2 third of this one get the delta AB value that finally works out to be 106.67 by EI. If you substitute the value here in terms of kiloton dash meter square, you are going to get the final answer in terms of meters or this can also be written in the other way as 106.67 by EI kiloton dash meter cube. You can write like that also, kiloton dash meter cube, there is no problem. Or if you substitute this by here, get the final answer as in terms of meters. The slope is read in terms of radians, 26.67 by EI radians or you can take this as 26.67 by EI kiloton dash meter square. You can write like that also. Now the slope at C, this is very important to be understood. Now in this case I have enlarge the elastic curve. Elastic curve will be not of such a big variation. It will be too small. The bending nature of bending will be very small here but I have just enlarged it to make to understand the concept of calculating the slope at C. Now this is the elastic curve drawn to AB. I have prolonged this line here. There is a procedure of getting the value slope at C. Draw the tangential line at B, support B, as usual. The change in the slope direction will get me the slope, theta B. Now draw another tangential line from the point under consideration. The point under consideration is now C. From here you saw a tangential line. Mark this point as C when it meets the horizontal line AB. The angle made that draw an, an horizontal line at the intersection of these two tangential lines, intersection of tangential line drawn at P and drawn at C, draw an horizontal line. The angle that is made with respect to the AB at C is theta C. From the concept of alternative interior angles, what we have studied in our school days, the angle at this here, since this is between two parallel lines, the angle will be equal to theta c. This is the theorem of or the concept of internal alternative angles, alternative internal angles concept between two parallel lines. These two are equal. The angle that is between the tangential line c and b is a very small change. So we are going to designate that by delta theta of CB, a small change in the angle of rotation, slope. So we designate this angle as delta, either small delta or capital delta, whichever you like, you put it, theta CB, the change in the angle from C to B. Now here if you observe, between once again these two lines are parallel from the concept of alternative interior angles, this angle will be equal to this angle. Now what is the value of theta b here? Theta b will be equal to the summation of 
theta c and delta theta c b theta b will be equal to theta c plus delta c now we write the equation for this so what is theta c here how to calculate theta c it's theta b minus delta of theta c b we already know how to calculate the theta b and we have already calculated here as capital delta b by capital delta a b by l we know how to calculate and already it has been calculated small delta theta c b is called as change of slope from c to b and this can be calculated it is the area of m by a diagram drawn between the elastic curve between c and b this portion whatever the area is there that has to be considered the value of delta theta c b is equal to the area of this portion between c b calculate that it is half into base it right base is 2 meters height is 20 by e i half into 2 into 20 by e i i've written here kiloton dash meter square or I can put it in terms of radians, no problem. So theta c you have calculated. Already we had in the previous section, we had this value of theta b that is 26.67 by e i. The final change in the slope here between c and b is equal to 6.67 by e i radians. Now how to get the deflection at center? I said earlier that it is symmetrical in loading but not symmetrical in section. Therefore, we cannot take the symmetry of the section here to solve the problem. You solve by regular method. You know how to draw, get the values. Mark the deflection under the load C as C C1, that is delta C. Mark the other point C2 on the tangential line B A dash. So we know how to get the values of CC1. Consider the triangle BCC2. Get me the value of CC2. It is theta B into theta B into 2 meters. The final product of this is 53.34 by EI. Now CC1. As usual, the moment of the area of M by A diagram between C and B about C. About C. You can observe that here. So you have this half into base into height into one third of two meters. It's 13.33 by EI. Substitute the values of the CC2 and CC1 in this equation. Get me the value of delta c and the final deflection at the under the load c will be equal to 40.01 by e i kiloton meter q or if you substitute the value of e i you are going to get that value as in terms of meters then convert that into millimeters by multiplying it by thousand one meter is equal to thousand mm this is the end of the session